In the winter of 2016, I met the man that would be the love of my life, and I moved back down to Indiana so we could be together, and then we got married in 2020. And it was just amazing how our journey has progressed. Derek has been so amazing and so supportive, especially since my mental health started to decline. I was misdiagnosed as having bipolar 2, uh, when in fact I actually have dissociative identity disorder. And through all the trials and tribulations, he and I have stood by each other and it's been remarkable. So the company that I worked for uh, started doing trunk or treats and it became the highlight of my year because I would um, dress in pop culture drag and oh it was always so much fun So Renslin Productions started to be a main focus for me and it became a creative outlet and it was just a great way to get my creative side going, especially since I couldn't work on films. Not that I couldn't, it's just there wasn't time, and with the disaster that in my arms tonight became, I just, I just felt it was easier to create something smaller and more often than what I'd been doing. Uh, this comes in a line of figures that I have um, had issues with. Um, I think they're slowly being uh, rectified. Uh, regardless, I still love them. I still have them. Um, I still want to build on this line for myself. Um, so it got to be a thing where I was having the itch to be more like my actual self. And I created this character named Muffin Prospect and she had her own YouTube, well has. Um, I haven't taken down any of the videos, but she has her own YouTube channel and it was a way for me to dress up to feel like I could be my natural self and then still have a commentary on everyday life social awareness and and reaction and how you deal with certain awkward things that you encounter in life and 
And I'm hoping to glean a little bit of insight as far as how many of you react to the situations that I'm going to present in this video. I did a little titty augmentation and I don't think it's too drastic, but I just want to make sure that they're on point. In our daily lives, we are all going about the world and going different places and seeing different social interactions happen, and especially the ones that are extremely awkward. Some are downright violent. And in this day of social media where everything is broadcast on a 24-hour spectrum, how do you react to certain events or, or social situations that are awkward? I think back on the days of when, you know, you were at a department store, grocery store, or somewhere out where the public is out in masses, and you would encounter a child that is just going berserk, and the parents were doing nothing about it. They were just letting it happen. You know, it used to be that somebody would come up and say, you know, excuse me, you need to bring the child in. Well, nowadays, you can't do that because the child could be autistic. It could be that they're freaking out because of their condition. Or it could be that they're just an unruly child and the parents are going to say, fuck you for getting involved in my child's life. The dynamics of how we handle awkward social moments is changing constantly. So what do you do? I'm perplexed. In 2019, I started painting, and it was something that I didn't think I'd be good at. However, it became an obsession, just like most things in my life. I mean, take a look around me. I'm pop culture centered, um, and... Doing Phoenix Red Fire art just became an amazing outlet, especially with my mental health issues. And it was something that I could do and also promote on YouTube. And I sold about nine paintings. Um, and I'm looking for a different platform to sell them on. So if any of you have suggestions, please let me know in the comments. I started having a really bad time and it got to be where I knew that there was something missing from my life. And I knew what it was. It's always been there. But how did I possibly think I could go about transitioning so late in my life? So I started to create a blog as Constance to get out my fears and frustrations and admitting to myself that I'm transgender. And I thought that would be enough for me. Hi everyone, my name is Constance. I'm an uh, 
transgender woman. And at the age of 46, and as of today, I'm coming out to myself. Oh, this is going to be such a complicated road. such a complicated road you have no idea <laughs> I have a therapy session tomorrow and I'm going to be talking a lot about this and the impact it has on my life as I know it before it all either evolves or unravels how long that process is going to take. So let the gods and goddesses be on my side. I just want to be comfortable in my own skin. In November 2022, at the age of 46, I came out. And I came out with a bang. I dropped the ball. Well, no, I didn't drop a ball. I dropped the news to my husband, Derek. And I thought it was going to be done and over with. And amazingly, we're still together and happier than ever. And I took to social media and came out to everybody on Facebook. And I, I received a lot of praise and I noticed that eventually that there would be a huge drop in the number of friends I have on Facebook, which I wasn't really surprised about. I was a little disappointed but I did it I finally came out and my journey has been remarkable Hello everyone, Chad Miller here with Red and Sloan Productions, and I wanted to talk to you all about the fact that it is National Transgender Awareness Week, and um, this hits uh, pretty home to me. Um, well, let me have somebody else tell you why. Hello, my name is Constance Miller, and had you told me that three days ago when I came out as a trans woman that it was National Transgender Awareness Week, I would have been shocked. I had no clue, and I think it's miraculous that the timing is right. In March of 2023, I began hormone replacement therapy. And that has been a life changer. So a few days ago, I stumbled upon a video from another trans woman um, who basically created a guide to trans femme life. And I found it to be very interesting and 
one of the biggest things that I took away from it was that she said that coming out as trans gives you a second chance at rolling the dice of life. And I just found that to be very profound. And I was just like, wow, you know, that is so, so very true. So that just kind of really put things into perspective for me. And uh, just a couple days ago, I had an appointment uh, with a clinic uh, that's about a half hour from where I live, and they specialize in LGBT plus uh, care, including uh, gender affirmation uh, hormone therapy. So I got the ball rolling on that, and I should be picking up my hormones today. So. I'm super duper excited about that. Um, the process um, is going to be life changing, obviously. And we went over the pros and the cons and all that kind of stuff. So it's not like I just dove in and said, let's do this, you know. Uh, there was lots of discussion and, um, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, there's going to be physical changes to my body. There's going to be emotional changes. And... Um, I'm, I'm just ready to take that step. So eventually I thought that I was ready to give up wearing wigs. And I got my first feminine haircut by my dear friend Holly. And I thought I, I was ready for, for that move. And it turns out I wasn't. And I really wanted my hair to grow out a bit more and eventually it did and I abandoned the wigs and have been doing my natural hair ever since and it's it's really hard to explain but I've always wanted long hair ever since I was little and I remember I think back in middle school, yeah, I wanted a mullet because mullets were big back in the day. And my mom said no, thankfully. <laughs> and I think she knew that it was because I was so feminine and to have long hair would just accentuate that. So yeah, never got a mullet, like I said, thankfully, and I'm rocking my own hair. So it's been a year and a half since I came out as trans, and I still have my mental health issues, but overall, I've got a great therapist, a great psychiatrist, and they work closely together. And I go to a clinic um, a couple towns away uh, for my transgender care. And I'm really, really blessed. It's not always been easy. But it feels so good to be me. And I can't take that back. I don't want to take it back. Some people ask if I regret not coming out sooner, and I just simply say that everything happens for a reason. I wasn't meant to come out until I did. And I know I'm not the only person to come out 
late in life. I wouldn't say late. Well, I mean, it's late compared to my age, but I'm still young. I feel young. I feel beautiful. And that's something that has always eluded me. My, my self-worth as far as my body and how I look. I'm starting to love my body. And it feels just amazing. So that's been my journey. It's been a wild ride. Good times, bad times. But finally being who I'm meant to be is the greatest reward that life could ever give me.